Hey, good evening, everybody. It is 6.30, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Kelly Wilson. I am a registered dietitian with Trinity Health Ann Arbor's Lifestyle Medicine Program, and this is part 10 of our Cooking with Plants series. Tonight, we're going to be talking all about whole food, plant-based snacks. But before we get into that, I um, want to cover a couple housekeeping things and um, talk to you a little bit about lifestyle medicine in case you haven't been with us for our other classes. A um, couple housekeeping things. Everybody is muted and your cameras are off and we're doing that because we record these classes and that helps us have a cleaner recording so that if you want to go back and watch the video or we have folks who are able to um, join us tonight who want to watch the video, it's clean and an easy recording for them to, to follow and pay attention to. We do still want you to participate and ask questions if they come up. Um, so you can use the Q&A function which is at the top of your screen. There's two little word bubbles kind of on top of each other, and the top one has a question mark in it, and there's the letters Q&A underneath that. Use that feature. My colleague, Clisty is here with me tonight, and she'll be paying attention to that Q&A and answering questions, or if it's a question that feels relevant for, for everybody to hear the answer to, um, she may aim at, ask me to answer it in real time. Um, so drop your drop your comments and questions there. And then if you want closed captioning, um, from some folks have requested that. If you go up again to that same toolbar at the top of your screen where it says more under three dots, it's on the right hand side of your screen. You go under there, you choose language options, and then from that drop down menu, you can select closed captioning and that turns on live closed captioning for you. Um, so with that out of the way, what is lifestyle medicine? What is our, our team and our, our department all about? So lifestyle medicine is a medical subspecialty that focuses on disease treatment, reversal, and prevention, and whole person health using six key pillars. So we in this class focus on one of the pillars, which is a whole food plant forward dietary pattern. So like Michael Pollan said, eat food, mostly plants. That's what we're talking about. Um, the other pillars would be movement, so finding joyful, comfortable ways to regularly move your body, positive social relationships, avoiding risky substances, healthy ways of managing stress, and then restorative sleep, which is one of my favorite pillars. So in our practice here at the hospital, we talk to our patients about each one of those six pillars and help them, again, focus on disease treatment, reversal, prevention through the lens of those six pillars. Um, but tonight we're talking food. And like I said, we're going to be talking about some whole food plant-based snacks. We get a lot of questions about, you know, okay, we've made all these delicious meals, but if I get hungry between meals, what do I go for? So we're going to talk through some options. Snacks are perfectly fine to eat. Most people, however, if you're eating really robust, filling, again, whole food, fiber rich meals, you probably won't need snacks in between because that that fiber is going to keep you satiated or full for a really long time and keep, help keep your blood sugar stable. But if you do, we've got you covered. So before we get into our recipes, I just wanted to go through a couple different snack options, some of them we've already talked about um, and some that might be new to you. So this is right here in this bowl, chia seed pudding. So we made this in, in one of our earlier classes. You can go to our class website and find the recipe there. Um, I think it's under our batch cooking and our meal prep. Class. I don't remember what month that was, but if you um, look for the, the name meal prepper batch cooking, you'll find the recipe under there. This is full of omega-3 fatty acids, full of calcium, um, and chia seeds absorb 10 times their weight in water, so they, they keep you pretty full. They've got good sticking power, and we put some berries in here for some antioxidants, which again, if you remember from previous classes, Antioxidants protect our cells from damage and help our body 
kind of calm down inflammation and inflammation is the root of chronic disease. So we want those antioxidants and other, other phytochemicals, some of which we'll talk about today on board to help reduce that inflammation and prevent that chronic disease. So chia seed pudding, great snack. It's also a really tasty dessert option too. I like it topped with um, some cacao nibs or some shredded coconut is really tasty. And then we've got some hummus. So we've talked about beans before and how valuable those are to add to your daily plate. Uh, this is another great way that you can get beans in is a bean dip like hummus. When you're at the grocery store and you're looking for hummus, choose an option that is either made with 100% olive oil, there's no canola or soy or any of those processed vegetable oils, or is oil free. So this brand, um, I picked it up from Meyer. It is made with 100% olive oil. And this is actually a local company, at least local to Southeast Michigan company. So yeah, the added benefit of supporting a, a local food business. There's another brand called Oasis that is oil free. So if that's something that you're looking for based on your certain health conditions, that might be the brand you want to go with. And I believe Cedars also has an oil free option. So with your hummus to make this a complete snack, you could have this with some carrots, some carrot sticks or other veggies of your choice or some whole grain crackers. These are a light rye cracker. Um, when you look for your crackers, you just want to look for it on the back here where the ingredients label is, and I'll hold it up here in case that's easier to see. Um, the first ingredient is whole grain rye flour. That's exactly what you're looking for. Whole grain, whole something um, as your first couple ingredients. Then one of my personal favorite snacks is air popped popcorn. So about three cups of air popped popcorn, great healthy whole grain snack. You could even sprinkle some nutritional yeast on this if you wanted kind of that cheesy, more umami flavor. And then nut butter or um, a handful of your favorite nut paired with a piece of fruit. It's apple season. We just had apple crunch here at the hospital yesterday, and this is a gorgeous Empire Apple from Frosty Orchards in, in Dexter. Um, so you could pair that with your, your peanut butter, got a little good fiber and some good protein as well. So those are just a couple options to get you started. Um, some of my other favorite snack options would be edamame. So it looks like a snap pea in the frozen section, um, E D A M A. M E, you can spell check me on that. Uh, you just microwave it or steam it and sprinkle a little bit of salt. And then you don't eat the pod, but you eat the, the seeds that are inside the pod. And those um, edamame beans are really high in protein and fiber and a super tasty filling, filling snack. So um, I promised you some recipes that are, are snack based and we've got four of them. So our first one tonight, we're gonna do a trail mix. And our second recipe, we're gonna make some um, roasted chickpeas. Then we're gonna make some pumpkin peanut butter energy bites. And uh, then we'll do a cowboy caviar. And we're gonna finish off with some date bites. So you get a little bit of savory and a little bit of sweet. So our trail mix, trail mix is something that I love because it's really versatile and you can really make it your own. So for our trail mix tonight, what we're gonna um, use is one cup of air popped popcorn. And when you're making your trail mix, it's helpful to have an airtight container. This is all shelf stable. You don't need to refrigerate it. Um, and so if you wanna keep it on your counter or put it in your pantry, an airtight container with a lid. I left my lid over there, so we'll pretend that I've got a lid for it right now. Um, is gonna be a good way to, to store it. So we'll just dump all this in our bowl. I'm gonna add a little bit at a time here. I've got half a cup of almonds as well. Um, a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds or pepitas. And some freeze dried, oh, thanks, Glistine. Pays to have help in the kitchen. 
<laughs> and some freeze dried strawberries. And then about a quarter cup of those and a quarter cup of some dark chocolate chips. I'm just going to kind of layer everything else back in here. I'm doing that so that things get mixed up. But now that I have my lid, what we can do is just give them a little shake to mix up. So there's your uh, trail mix. And we used raw nuts and raw seeds because some of the roasted nuts and seeds have um, a lot of salt on them, or they might have canola oil, soybean oil, some of those unhealthy oils that we want to avoid. We also used a freeze-dried strawberry. Um, there's freeze-dried raspberries. There's all, um, lots of different freeze-dried fruits. I think I've even seen blueberries before. Just um, to show you an example of a lower sugar option, you could totally use dried fruit in place of that freeze-dried strawberry if you wanted to. Um, the freeze-dried, or excuse me, the, the dried fruit, watch out for ones that have added sugar to them and just be mindful of your consumption of them because they are a concentrated sugar source, even though they, they are fruit. So again, this is something you can totally make your own. You, you can swap out the different nuts and seeds. Maybe you like cashews, maybe you like sunflower seeds, maybe you like walnuts and those that's what you want to put in here instead. And you could totally skip the chocolate altogether. I kind of like having a little bit of sweet and a little bit of savory together. That might not be your thing and that's totally fine. Um, and then when you go to have this as a snack, a uh, hearty handful or two is kind of what you're you're looking at for a serving size there. So easy peasy trail mix. And, all, and remember, all of these recipes are going to be on the class website, which will have a QR code at the end of class and in the class follow up email, you'll receive the link to that website as well. So don't worry about writing stuff down or if you, you missed um, an ingredient, it's OK. It'll be on that website for you. All right. Recipe number two. We are going to do some roasted chickpeas. So this is what they look like when they're finished. So we're going to start with this. OK, and we're going to get to this right here. Um, these are a really great salty, crunchy, savory snack. If, if you like salty, crunchy snacks, then you want to try to move away from maybe the chips and have a healthier option. This might be a, a recipe for you. It's super simple and very, very tasty. So we'll go through the process and then revisit those done chickpeas in a second. So first you want to start with a bowl of, or excuse me, this is um, a 15 ounce can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans that have been drained and rinsed. And to prepare them for the roasting, what you're going to want to do is pat them dry. So I've got some paper towel here. Even though we drained and rinsed them, they're still kind of, I don't know if you can see, they're still kind of shiny and, and moist. So we want to dry. They don't have to be perfectly dry, but we just want to get some of the moisture off. And then you might notice as you're doing that, some, oops, I went too far, some skins that around the chickpeas um, might flake off, and that's perfectly fine. We want to take those off because having those skins off is gonna actually help the chickpeas crisp up a little bit more. So we're patting and removing skins is kind of our goal here. Um, chickpeas are one of the most nutrient dense foods. I love having them in my culinary cabinet, not only because they taste good, but because of their nutritional prowess. They are high in fiber. We got um, about four grams per half cup, and they're high in protein, about seven grams per half cup. And they're also high in something called folate, which is a B vitamin. Um, you may have heard it if you are um, a person who's ever had a baby. It's a, it's a really important nutrient during pregnancy because it's integral 
to DNA synthesis. It's also really important for metabolizing homocysteine, which is an amino acid that if we have high levels of has been linked to cardiovascular disease. So pretty, pretty important nutrient. Also helps with neurotransmitter production as well. All right, so we're getting most of these skins off. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, cooking doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get as many of these as possible. That's looking pretty good to me. And I'm feeling like we got a good amount of the moisture off. So now what we're going to do is I've got about a tablespoon of avocado oil. I'm just going to toss that on here, coat them. Okay, and then we are going to put it on a baking sheet like this. Wrinkle it on there. And hey, I see some more of these skins. They, that made it easier to see them. So I'm going to pull some of these off. And then we are going to stick it in a 400 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes. OK, and you don't have to um, stir it necessarily. You can check after 20 minutes if you want to and just see how they're browning. You want them to be getting um, light brown, not super dark brown. Like, for example, this one right here is a little bit darker than what I'd want. You're going more for this color here. OK, um, so 400 degrees. You take it out. They're in, after 20 and 30 minutes, they look nice and golden brown like this. They're still hot. And then what you do is you have a, a tablespoon, or excuse me, a teaspoon of curry powder. You could use a half teaspoon of cumin or quarter, excuse me, a half teaspoon of um, paprika or a quarter teaspoon of cumin. And you sprinkle those spices on while the chickpeas are hot. We don't put the spices on before we roast the chickpeas because the spices will burn at that higher temperature um, for that long of time. So we put it on now while the chickpeas are hot and then they're, they're evenly coated and tasty, crunchy. Um, you could sprinkle a little bit of salt on here too if you wanted to, or if you're avoiding salt for health reasons, skip that step. These are good as a salad topping. They're good as kind of a crouton alternative in soup. And they're really tasty, just scooping a handful up and popping them in your mouth. They will, they're best in terms of their crunchiness right out of the oven, right after they've cooled down. You can totally store them on the counter in an airtight container for a couple days and they'll they'll be just fine from a food safety perspective but they do lose their crunchiness over time because they just start to absorb moisture from the surrounding environment so in terms of crunchiness best that um, very first day so there you go you got tasty tasty chickpeas and i did want to mention one other thing we used avocado oil you may remember from other classes that olive oil smoke point is about 350 degrees. So anytime we're cooking above 350 degrees, we want to use a higher temperature oil like an avocado oil um, so that we don't go above that, that smoke point. Okay. All right. Recipe number two. This is one of my favorites. Um, because these are very tasty. So these are our pumpkin and ener oat energy bites. Um, this is a great recipe for a dessert. It's a great recipe for replacing maybe some of the processed uh, protein or energy bars that you might buy because you can make a batch of it. The batch we're going to make tonight makes about 30 energy bites um, and you probably don't need that just for, for one week. So you can roll these up, freeze them, and they'll keep for a, a few weeks. So this is a nice um, make on the weekend kind of recipe to give you some snacks throughout the week and for, for future weeks ahead. So we're starting with our dry ingredients for these energy bites. We've got three cups of rolled oats. Now, if you remember from previous classes, 
rolled oats are a whole grain and whole grains. It means that they have the three full parts of the grain, the bran, the endosperm and the germ. So they've got the, the healthy fat center that has some vitamin E in it. They've got the starchy core and then the high fiber and B vitamin rich bran, which is that outer layer. So these are a high fiber food, particularly high and soluble fiber which is the kind of fiber that helps act like a sponge and helps our body get rid of excess cholesterol. So it can be really helpful in, in managing cholesterol levels and reducing cardiovascular disease risk. Um, and they're tasty. So bonuses all around. So we've got three cups in our bowl, and then we are going to add a quarter cup of ground flaxseed. So this is our ground flaxseed. Flaxseed is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which are an essential fatty acid, meaning we can't make them in our body. So we need to eat food sources of omega-3s in order to get this healthy anti-inflammatory brain health promoting fat into our diet. So um, flax seeds, walnuts are two great sources of omega-3 fatty acids, plant-based sources. It's also a really high source of lignans, which are a type of phytoestrogen uh, that is beneficial for cancer prevention, particularly for certain types of breast cancer. So, and also helpful for cardiovascular health as well. So wonderful benefit health-wise. And in the recipe, what it's doing, um, its function is to add nutritional value, but also help kind of bind and stick things together. It absorbs a good amount of water and liquid and will form kind of like a gel. So it's going to help us keep everything stuck together. So we got a quarter cup of flaxseed, three cups of oats, and then we're going to add in a tablespoon of cinnamon. You could totally use pumpkin. Um, I added about two thirds, I think, of a tablespoon here. I'm, I'm making the executive decision that a tablespoon seems a little much to me right now. You could totally use pumpkin pie spice if you wanted to. Um, we don't have it, so I just often swap in cinnamon. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice and you don't want to go out and buy a jar of it, you can swap in cinnamon, no problem. And then half a cup of dark chocolate chips going in here. I'm going to give this a stir. Okay, and I'm just looking to get the spices and the flax seeds evenly mixed throughout the dish. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for a second. Uh, and then we're going to mix together our more liquid ingredients. So, so I, this is pumpkin oat bites. So we've, we've got our pumpkin here. I'm gonna add that in here. I'm so excited that it's fall and it's pumpkin season because I feel like it's more justifiable that I eat the copious amount of pumpkin that I love to eat because it's fall. Uh, pumpkin is really high in fiber, and three grams of fiber per half cup, uh, and also really high in vitamin A or carotenoids. Carotenoids are what give yellow and orange foods their, their color. They're also found in, in some of our, our green foods, but when you think carotenoids, think primarily like our yellow and our orange foods and carotenoids, higher intakes of carotenoids has been shown to potentially reduce risk for certain types of cancers, particularly again, certain types of breast cancers. So again, really, and vitamin A, very important for eye health too, um, especially as we get older. So powerhouse ingredient. And then we've got one cup of nut butter. So we're using peanut butter. If you have a, a peanut allergy or you don't like the taste of peanut butter, you could swap in almond butter or cashew butter, any other kind of butter, nut butter that you would like. Um, you could also totally use tahini in this application. Um, tahini's ground up sesame seeds. It'll add us, it'll be a slightly different, less sweet flavor uh, than the peanut butter, but it'll definitely work. And when you're at the store and you're looking for your nut butters, 
peanut butter or otherwise. Make sure that you turn the jar around, you look at that label, look at where it says ingredients, and it should only say peanuts may, and maybe salt, nothing else. That's, that's what you're looking for. Some of our peanut butters have partially hydrogenated or fully hydrogenated oils in them. Those are trans fats and have been linked to cardiovascular disease. We do not want those in our diet at all, even in small quantities. So wean yourself away from that and get to um, a nut butter that's just peanuts and salt. Also, they sometimes add palm oil, which is a saturated fat. And again, in terms of cardiovascular disease risk, insulin resistance, so, so pre-diabetes or diabetes, um, and palm oil, excuse me, and other forms of saturated fat, we don't want to be consuming those. Um, so again, just look for peanuts, salt. That's what you're going for. All right, our next ingredient is maple syrup. We have got a quarter cup of that going in here. You could use honey too if you don't have maple syrup or you prefer the taste of honey over, over maple syrup. And then we have a teaspoon of vanilla and vanilla is a good tool, just like cinnamon actually, for increasing our perception of sweetness without um, having to add more sugar. So now I'm just gonna stir all these ingredients together. And my goal here is just to get them evenly mixed so that when we add them to the oats that we can coat everything and the cinnamon doesn't get just in one section of the batter and sweetness gets spread all the way through. Okay, so this is what we end up with, a kind of thick paste, okay? And this is what's gonna help gel everything together. So we got our dry ingredients. We're gonna add in our wet ingredients here. Off. Smells really good. I wish you guys were here. The peanut butter and the pumpkin. Peanut butter and pumpkin is a really classic combination to me anyways. I also really love it um, if you're a whole grain toast person and you enjoy a whole grain uh, toast for breakfast like I do, you could toast up a couple slices of your favorite whole grain bread mix some pumpkin and a couple tablespoons of peanut butter together and then spread that on your toast sprinkle with a little bit of cinnamon and then a couple tablespoons of hemp seeds and you've got a high protein with the hemp seeds high fiber pretty filling and very tasty breakfast and you could actually use that as a snack just like one piece of toast, a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of pumpkin, and some hemp seeds. Okay, I am going to keep on mixing here. You got until all of the oats are incorporated. And I think what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to put on some gloves because I'm going to stick my hands in here. And I have to cook another recipe after this, so I don't want my hands to be too gross. But if you're at home and you're just making this for yourself, as long as you have clean hands, you can just stick your hands right in this bowl. And I'm just doing this again to incorporate the rest of these oats that are kind of sticking to the bottom here. Right, that looks pretty good to me. All right, once all of your ingredients are fully mixed together and you feel like the chocolate chips are evenly distributed, we start to roll. And the gloves actually come in handy for this part too if you don't want to get your hands super messy. Um, so we pinch off about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons worth of this batter. And then I'm just gonna press it into a ball in my hands and roll. And so you're getting something about that size. You hold it up to the other camera too. So it's still bite size, um, 
but it's nicely formed in a ball. So you can keep doing that until all of this is gone and you should get about 30 energy bites from this. And again, they freeze really well. So you can stick them, um, wrap them in individual, um, you could actually, you could probably put freeze them on a, a baking tray separated and then stick them into a freezer bag. That would work really well. Or you could wrap them individually in some plastic wrap and then stick them in the freezer that way and then just take them out a little bit before you want to eat them. Um, or, you know, just pop them right into your lunch box. And then by the time you get to your the afternoon time and you're needing that snack, they're defrosted and, and ready to go. One other thing about this recipe, um, another substitution that you could do if you want to skip the chocolate chips, you could throw in some dried fruit or we're going to work with some dates in a minute. You could totally chop, throw in some chopped dates uh, that would or raisins. Those would work out really well here, too. All right. So I'm not going to make you watch me roll all 30 of these balls. So we're going to set this aside and I will do that later um, when you don't have to watch me. All right, get my gloves off and move on to some cowboy caviar. Thank you, Clissy. I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick. All right. And again, don't forget if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about, please drop your questions in the Q&A. And Clisty will be happy to answer those questions or yell out to me to answer those questions. All right, so cowboy caviar. This is basically just a bean dip or bean salad. Um, it's not really a dip because it's not all pureed together. So more of a bean salad. It's good as a party appetizer. You may have had it before. Um, it's a really tasty snack with some whole grain crackers like what we saw on our first little snack tray. So to start, you want to get uh, a can of, so a 15 ounce can of black beans. It's what's on this side here. And then a 15 ounce can of black eyed peas. And you want to drain and rinse them. And remember that when we rinse them, we're just reducing the sodium content and we're getting rid of the, the liquid that they were canned in. We don't need that. In, in the recipe. Um, you can also look for low sodium or no salt added canned beans. Kroger and Meyer, which are the two big grocery stores around here, both carry those. So those are options that you can find. Um, and if you can't find black eyed peas or you don't like black eyed peas or you don't like black beans, you can use whatever bean you like. You could use the garbanzo beans. You could use great northern white beans, kidney beans doesn't matter. Um, but tonight we're using black beans and black eyed peas. It's kind of the more traditional combination. It's more of like a Tex-Mexy kind of dish. So we've got those in our bowl. And then we've also got a, there's a spatula. We've got one clove of garlic that has been minced. Okay. And when you're working with fresh garlic, it's a really good idea to start your cooking process with the garlic, set that aside, and then come back and add it later. So let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. And why is because there is a compound called allicin, A-L-L-I-C-I-N, that needs time to develop. And when you cut the garlic and the enzymes are able to start doing their work. It takes about 10 minutes or so for that compound to fully form. And allicin is a really potent phytochemical that can help reduce some of that inflammation we were talking about earlier in our body. So to get the most bang for your buck out of your garlic, mince it, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then incorporate it into your dish. Next, we're going to add some pepper. So we're going to do two peppers. I've got a yellow pepper that's already been diced up for us, and we have a red pepper that we're going to work together to get it to this dice. So dice just means um, uniform kind of squares and doesn't, again, have to be perfect, but this is 
more of like a salad type dish that you might eat with chips or whole grain crackers. So we want these pieces to be small enough to be bite sized. So we're going for something that's like the size of the tip of your finger. Okay. So to get our pepper to that state, what we're going to do is lay it lengthwise on the cutting board. I'm going to slice the bumpy end off. Okay. Set that on my cutting board. And now that's stable. Okay. And we haven't talked about this yet. So let's talk about how to hold a knife. If you've been with us for our other classes, you know the drill. But in case you haven't been, you pinch the knife between your thumb and your first finger, and then wrap your other three fingers around that blade. So here's another view on the other camera. You can see that there. Okay. That just helps create um, a really stable grip and reduce potential risk for injury. And again, if you haven't been with us this or you forgot, this is a chef's knife and it's got this rounded tip, which helps with creating this rocking motion so it can make slicing and mincing much faster and easier. Okay, so now we've got our pepper. My non-knife hand, I'm gonna make a claw to keep the tips of my fingers away from my knife blade, keep me safe. And then I'm just gonna slice down the edge of this pepper. And my goal is to cut the sides away from this kind of pithy part and keep all the seeds stuck to the top stem. So that creates a little bit less mess and makes it easier for cleaning up. And the other benefit of doing this is that then I get fairly uniform pieces that then I can stack on top of each other and be more efficient in my cutting when I'm making my slices. And we're making these slices about uniformly spaced apart so that then we can go the opposite direction and get fairly uniformly sized squares. Okay, so we're gonna put those in our bowl Cut the rest of these too. So peppers are really high in vitamin C, which is really good for our immune health and collagen production. Collagen is kind of a hot topic, right? But we need good amounts of vitamin C for ample collagen production. All right, so we're going to get this last little pepper bits in there. Great. And then we'll throw in our yellow pepper. I was also trying with this recipe to get as many colors as possible in here. Um, I should have used an orange pepper, but that's okay. Because I think we've talked about this before, but with the whole food plant forward dietary pattern, the goal really is to eat the rainbow because each of the colors in our those plant-based foods corresponds to a different phytochemical or plant nutrient that is beneficial for our health and disease prevention or potentially reversal and treatment. So eating the rainbow, not through Skittles, but through whole real food is very um, beneficial for your overall health and well-being. All right, so another yellow that we're adding into the mix is one cup of corn. So this is frozen corn that was just defrosted. Okay. You could use fresh corn on the cob if you had it. This recipe is, is really a, a, a summer seasonal recipe. We can find all these things in the grocery stores here now, uh, thanks to our modern food system, but this is definitely pulling on some summer flavors. Case in point, we've got two cups of cherry tomatoes that are going to go in here. These are cherry tomatoes that I halved or quartered again to get into bite-sized pieces so they fit into here. So my bowl is getting pretty full. So I'm gonna give this a stir to mix together all of the elements before we do our final two veggies and then make a dressing. Okay, that's pretty well incorporated. So our last two veggies, we've got a red 
onion. And I know some of you have been with us as we've cut red onions, but for those of you who haven't, we're gonna go through cutting an onion together. I like to start by slicing off the stem end of the onion. And then we're gonna cut this in half to make it easier to peel. Um, so putting that on the cutting board and then slicing through the root end down towards the cutting board. And then we are going to peel off the outer layers of the onion. Fun fact, you can use onion skins for dyeing. Um, you might be noticing the imprint of color that the skins are already leaving on my cutting board. If you wanna do natural dyeing of say like Easter eggs, or you've got some old um, cotton fabric lying around, onion skins are a great thing to use for dyeing. All right, get these off of here. All right, so you're getting the onion into its shiny, beautiful purple state. And then we're gonna use these lines that are uh, grooves kind of on the onion as our guidelines for making our slices. We're going to take the tip of our knife and slice along those ridges, not cutting all the way through to the root. We're gonna leave about a finger's width um, of onion unsliced by the root just helping to keep all of these slices together. And I'm gonna try not to cry. This onion gets me. And we're making pretty thin slices here um, because sometimes red onion can be pretty pungent and we just want little pops of that flavor. All right, now I've gotten to the part where I didn't slice all the way through and I'm just gonna make little strips. I'm going to set the onion aside and then I'm going to go back over those strips and I'm going to put the onion over here before I start crying. <laughs> oh, it's getting me. And it's going to happen. That's okay. Um, one of the things you can do to prevent that, sometimes it's not preventable and that's okay, but one of the things you can do to, oh, it's really getting me. <laughs> One of the things you can do to prevent that is make sure you have a really sharp knife. Oof, I'm going to have to this side. Uh, make sure you have a really sharp knife. It doesn't damage the cell walls of the onions as much. Oof, all right. <laughs> all right, see, I'm just like you. I cry too. All right, I'm going to have to get a napkin real quick. Can you hand me a napkin? Oh, actually, no, I have that one right here. Mm. All right, we're back. I think I'm okay now. <laughs> you can just tell me if I've got black all over my face. Um, all right, the, the next thing shouldn't make me cry. We've got a jalapeno pepper. Um, if you like it spicy, you can slice your jalapeno pepper um, across to get rings, and that gives you the white pith part and the seeds which will increase the, the heat or spiciness. Um, I only like a little bit of spice, so we're going to slice it a different way. I'm gonna cut the tip of the jalapeno off again so I have kind of a, a stable surface. I'm gonna hold it by the stem, and then I'm gonna slice just like what we did with the bell pepper down sides here. All right, and then we're gonna get these strips. And I'm gonna have to dab my onions again because the onions are still getting me. <laughs> and we're gonna make thin slices here. Again, so we don't get massive mouthfuls of jalapeno pepper. Get, get the good flavor. Typically, um, this time of year and, and later, the jalapeno peppers in the grocery store aren't quite as spicy as they are when they're in season, but sometimes you might be surprised and get a, a spicy one. So just you might want to test it out and then decide whether you want to add the seeds and the, the pith or just leave the fleshy green parts. 
All right, so we're mincing this. Mince, again, remember, is just to get into to small pieces. We do this with foods that are really flavorful, like garlic and these jalapeno peppers and ginger, so that we can infuse that flavor more evenly throughout our dish. So we are going to do mix that up. Look, look how beautiful this looks. Got a rainbow of color. So one rule of thumb that we talk to our patients about is aiming for about 30 different color, 30 different plant foods, excuse me, and eating the, the rainbow every week. And if you had this as a snack, you'd get many different plant foods and almost all of your colors in one dish, which is pretty cool. All right, so for our dressing, we're going to just pour the ingredients on and, and mix as we go. You could mix this all together in a separate bowl if you wanted to. We've got the juice of two limes, which is about a quarter cup. Okay, we're going to throw that on here. We've got a couple tablespoons of vinegar. I used a, a white balsamic vinegar. You could use a red wine vinegar. You could use a white vinegar if you wanted to. Okay. And then we've got a teaspoon of cumin, a quarter cup of cilantro that's been chopped. If you're a person that doesn't love the taste of cilantro, that's fine. Just leave it out. No big deal. We've got a half a teaspoon of maple syrup. And we're adding the maple syrup because we've added a, a lot of acid and it helps kind of balance out, if you remember from our flavor class, that acidity. Um, and it can also help balance out some of the bitterness you might experience from a spice like cumin. You can totally leave the maple syrup out. Um, it's not 100% necessary. We're using such a small amount, only half a teaspoon through this, this whole dish. So you're not getting a ton of sugar um, from you know, if you had a serving of this. Okay, and then we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. The dressing called for a quarter cup, but I'm probably gonna add even less than that. This is probably three tablespoons of olive oil. So then we just incorporate and mix that together. And voila, you've got your cowboy caviar salad. Again, just serve this with some whole grain crackers or a whole grain slice of bread, and you've got a really hearty, really fiber, really protein rich filling snack. Um, and you know, this is a great snack for football Sundays if you need to take something to watch the Lions play at a friend's house. Here you go. All right, very last recipe of the night is really, really simple. Clean off a little bit of space here. So, very, very last recipe is for stuffed dates. I love dates because they're like nature's candy. Um, they're very sweet. There's about 30 grams of sugar per a couple dates. Don't need more than a couple. Um, but they've got a ton of fiber. There's about four grams of fiber per two dates. And there's a ton of high antioxidant polyphenols in dates that have been studied for potentially helping reduce the risk of Alzheimer's or cardiovascular disease and cancer. So you're getting a lot of those beneficial phytochemicals. You're getting a satis satisfying sweet treat that kind of calms down that sweet craving and you're getting fiber. So win, win, win all around. Um, typically, you probably only need like one or two dates for a serving. I've got four here to show us a couple different ways that we could do this. So these are pitted medjool dates. Um, I like these personally the best because they're a little bit juicier, if you will. Um, and believe it or not, fun fact about dates, Clisty and I were just talking about this. There are fossilized date palms dating back 50 million year, years 
old. So dates have been around for a really long time and they've been cultivated for over 6,000 years. So they're one of the oldest cultivated foods that we have today, which is pretty cool. And they're a little bit more on the expensive side because they require a lot of hand labor. People have to literally climb the date palm trees. So think of a palm tree um, and how tall and big those are. People have to climb those and hand pollinate them at least a couple times throughout the growing season. And then they have to climb the trees another couple of times the growing season to protect the plants and pull off old leaves and then hand harvest most often. So that's why you, you might see them being a little bit on, on the pricier side because there's a lot of hand labor that's involved with them. But like I said, you only need a couple at a time so they can go a long way. Um, Clisty, is Someone there a question? Someone was asking if you use spe any special kind of chocolate chips. Oh, for our, um, that's a great question. For our previous recipes with the chocolate chips, I used, I think it was the Kroger, um, simple truth brand. Uh, they have like an organic chocolate chip. I just look for ones that don't have soy lecithin, um, which is an emulsifier and that are just, you know, chocolate, some sugar, um, maybe some cocoa butter in there. So again, general rule of thumb with all your food, shorter the ingredients list, the more words you can pronounce, likely the better it's going to be. So that's that's the direction I would go. Um, you could also use cacao nibs, which are a little bit more on the bitter side, this raw chocolate. And if you can find those in your grocery store, you could throw that in the recipe for the trail mix and for those pumpkin energy bites. No problem. Um, and for our dates, you could top the our dates with the cacao nibs, which is one of my favorite things to do. I just didn't have any, so I didn't bring those tonight. But if you want to make stuffed dates, you're slicing your date in half. These are, again, medjool dates that have already been pitted. If they weren't pitted, when you slice it in half, you can see um, how it's kind of white in here. That is where the pit was sitting. You just pull that pit right out, no problem. Um, I'm going to take probably about a teaspoon of peanut butter and just kind of fill in where that pit was. And then I've got some toppings here. So like I said, one of my favorites is cacao nibs because it, they're, they've got a little bit of a crunch. So it's a nice texture combination with the chewy dates and the creamy peanut butter. Um, similarly, you can use a little bit of coconut flakes. And these are unsweetened coconut flakes. And then again, you get that nice little little texture. You could also, we'll do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to add just a little bit of that peanut butter. And then we've got some of our freeze-dried strawberries that we used in our trail mix. And I crushed those down into a little bit of a powder. And then you can sprinkle that on there. And then also look again how pretty that looks. This is a really easy crowd pleasing dessert if you need to make a quick dessert for hosting people buy a container of the medjool dates some nut butter and then some some different toppings that you could sprinkle on top and it comes together really quickly and the presentation is really nice like i especially love the the crushed strawberries on that one so those are our recipes um i guess one other one Couple other things about the dates, because I know they're they're not as familiar to most people. They can work as a substitute for sugar in recipes. You can make like a, a date paste um, by a one-to-one -one ratio of water to pureed dates, and you can sub that one-to-one -one for sugar in recipes. So again, you're still getting some, some natural sugar from the dates, uh, but you're also getting those antioxidants and, and phytochemicals and the fiber as well. So some added health benefits. I like them diced up in salads, spe specifically if I'm going to have like radicchio or some other bitter greens in there. Remember that sweet helps to balance out some of that bitterness. So that's kind of a nice foil there or tossed with roasted Brussels sprouts 
pretty tasty that way too. Um, and you can mix them into smoothies as a sweetener uh, if you, instead of adding maple syrup or if you would add another sweetener, you could use a date in the place of that. So with that, um, Christy, could you share our slide, please? Christy's gonna pop up a slide on the screen for us. Thank you so much. I uh, just want to remind everybody uh, the icon on the right, so that QR code is for our class website. That's where all the recipes and resources live for our classes. I will post everything from tonight there along with the recording as well. And then on the other side of your screen is our class survey. If you could take just four minutes to fill that out. You can hold up your phone, scan it real quick right now. It really does go a long way. And I know I ask you to do this every month, um, but really you filling it out every month makes a big difference to the future of these classes and the types of the type of content, excuse me, that we um, fill the classes with. So I appreciate you in advance for taking the time to do that. And if you have any questions, you can email us. Um, our email is on the screen there, lifestylemedicine at trinityhealth.org. And if you want to learn more about our programs or set up an appointment with one of the lifestyle medicine practitioners on our team, just go to trinityhealthmichigan.org slash lifestyle medicine. There's a form on the website you can fill out and then we'll, we'll get you scheduled with one of us. Um, with that, I'm going to end a couple minutes early because I know I've gone over a few times um, these, these months. So I appreciate you being here with us. I hope you're feeling inspired to add some more whole food snacks to your weeks. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next month for our very last class, which is going to be on baking. Um, take good care. Have a great month. And I look forward to seeing you all in November. Bye.